If you knew nothing about Team Fortress 2, except that it reaches over 100,000 concurrent players despite being released in 2007, you would probably think that it'd be a great game with little to no bugs or exploits. However, as most of you have seen over the years, this is not the case. But, as recently as June and July of 2022, Valve has been putting out a lot of bug fixes for bugs that have been a part of the game for years. To list a few, they fixed some laggy Halloween animations, crossbow bolts disappearing, and the Iron Bomber's projectile hitbox. But one thing that all of these fixes have in common is that they don't address map issues. Yeah, they did fix those spots where you could use the other team's resupply room to teleport back to your spawn while touching the spawn gate, but that's just one fix compared to many outstanding issues. So, in this video, I'm going to showcase some issues that continue to persist in several TF2 maps that Valve can hopefully get around to fixing in one of the next updates. There are too many that I know of to list in a single video, so I might make a part 2 at a later date. To start off, we're on the best map in the game, Dust Bowl. And right outside of Blue Spawn, we see our first issue. There is a crack in the rock wall. And this crack, believe it or not, can actually be used by Red to see Blue leaving Spawn. And funny enough, this crack isn't even here in the pre-fortress version of Dust Bowl. Meaning, Valve had it right the first time, but then broke it somehow. Now the silliest part about this crack is that this can be fixed in Hammer in literal seconds. All you have to do is select all of the neighboring displacements and sew them together. And just like that, it's fixed. I found another one of these spots by the next control point where the displacements don't line up, and it can be fixed the exact same way. My guess is that Valve just doesn't know about these spots. After all, they're not that game breaking, especially not the second one. But they only take seconds to fix, so I don't see why they shouldn't go about patching these up. On the last stage of Dust Bowl, there's this one spot where it looks like you're shooting your sticky bombs through the wall but when you walk up against it, you can see that they are most certainly still there. This is definitely something that should be fixed, as red demos can set sticky traps that Blue has no chance of seeing. The sticky bombs disappearing stems from the fact that there is a large occluder brush that runs along the wall. Occluders, if you didn't already know, stop models that are behind it from rendering. So when you shoot this wall, the sticky bomb, which is a model, turns invisible because it goes through the occluder, and by walking up to the wall, you pass through the occluder brush revealing the sticky bomb. This isn't the only spot where this occurs. Over by the first control point on this wall, we have the same issue. The solution to this is also simple. Just move the occluder brush over just enough so that it's inside of the wall. This will eliminate the possibility of shooting sticky bombs through it. In the first scenario, it looks like Valve screwed this up by aligning the occluder with the metal wall instead of the brick one. In the second scenario, I think they were just lazy. Moving on to Dust Bowl's hot sister, Gold Rush, I want to talk about these little cubby areas connected to the conveyor belts. You can actually jump right into them. And the area is even big enough to place teleporters, allowing for some pretty funny reactions. I suppose it can be game breaking if the enemy team doesn't catch on to it and you're able to flank them repeatedly. But why does this happen? When Valve created these conveyor belts, they didn't add collision meshes, so you just pass right through them. Additionally, there are no clip brushes filling up this hole, so there's nothing stopping you from just going right in. These spots can easily be fixed by filling in the gaps with player clip brushes. Next on the list is Steel. By the first control point, there is a metal door. Using bullet or projectile weapons, you can't shoot through it unless you use the flamethrower, in which case you can shoot right through it like it doesn't exist. This can actually be quite effective, and restricts the area Blue can use to capture the point. This happens because of how Valve created a funk underscore door brush that is tied with the door model. The model itself isn't really responsible for most of the collisions, it's actually the funk underscore door brush that does all of that. And the reason why this brush doesn't block flame particles is because of one little setting that is ticked to yes, ignore debris. 
When set to yes, the funk door will allow flame particles to pass through because I guess Source sees them as debris objects? If it's set to no, it doesn't, and everything works as attended. I don't know why Valve set it to yes in the first place, or why flame particles are the only thing that will go through, but at least the fix is simple. Moving on to the one and only community-made map of the video, we have Pier. Overall, Pier is a wonderful, bug-free map, with the exception of blue spawn gates. Even though the edges look sealed off, you can shoot right through them using any bullet weapon or rocket launcher. This happens because the map maker forgot to add collisions to these vertical bars that run up along the side of the spawn gates. This isn't a huge issue that affects core gameplay, but just like everything else in the video, the fix is easy. The collision mesh for them already exists, so the problem can be fixed just by changing the collision setting to use V Physics. Lastly, we have Upward, where we got one bug fix in this last June patch that fixed being able to teleport back to spawn when changing your loadout or class while touching the enemy team's spawn door. However, there is something else on this map that I find to be more of an issue than that was. It exists in two separate areas that I know of, the first being right outside of Blue's second spawn room, and the second just before the last capture point area. Once Blue pushes the payload cart and reaches the checkpoints, these update and become sticky in that if you jump into them from underneath, your player will get stuck in them and float in mid-air. If you are playing as Pyro and are using the detonator, you can build momentum by attempting to detonator jump, increasing your flamethrower's range. This is often referred to as a Snyro spot or exploit, and it happens because the source engine thinks you're moving through the air, increasing speed, thus increasing the speed of the flamethrower's particles. When set up properly, this can be incredibly effective. I've personally done this before, and the only counter to this turned out to be enemy snipers. This bug of getting stuck can be traced to this one input present on both sign models that enables collision. For some reason, enabling collision this way causes you to get stuck when touching the sign. I don't know why Valve decided to add collisions to these two signs this way, but by deleting the enable collision input on both of them all together, the issue is essentially resolved, as there's just no need for these particular signs to have collisions in the first place. Anyway, that's all I have to share with you all today. If you enjoyed this video and want to see a part 2, leave a like and a comment. And if you have any ideas or know of any spots that I should include in a part 2, be sure to let me know. I will see you all later. This is LED switching off.